Hello, my friends. How's it going? This is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts, and this week we're going to mix it up, do something fun. We're going to look at how to build a quadrant scatter plot in Tableau Desktop. All right, so let's go ahead and look at one of these and talk about what exactly these are used for and why you might be interested in this. Okay, so here's an example of a scatter plot that's looking at the different countries of the world, and it's comparing their health expenditure per capita as a percentage. Sorry, health expenditure as a percentage of their GDP compared to the infant mortality rate. So of course, you know, generally you want to be a country that has a lower infant mortality rate. And then, you know, I, I guess it doesn't really matter whether you spend a lot to get there or not. I guess ideally, you know, if your country is doing great, really healthy, maybe you don't have to spend a huge amount of money to achieve lower infant mortality. I don't know. There's probably some healthcare professionals that could speak to this. That said, uh, what I've done here is I've got some average lines, which are plotted against this scatter plot. And then we've broken the countries out into four different sections. So for example, just to pick a random country like Lesotho, um, this country has a high, relatively high health expenditure as a percentage of GDP, but also a relatively high infant mortality rate. Okay. So this allows us to be able to break countries up into different statistical segments and then be able to analyze, like, are these countries similar? Why is this happening? Where is this happening? Um, so we're going to dive into all that good stuff. Um, we're going to start from scratch. Uh, well, pretty much from scratch. We'll start by um, applying this to a scatter plot that doesn't have all of this done to it yet. Now, all of this said, um, it, we're going to drop a link in the description below where you can download this Tableau workbook. So if you want to kind of follow along and, and build this for yourself, uh, then you have the ability to. All right, so let's dive in. Um, okay, so first up, I want to get the average lines onto my scatter plot. So what I'm going to do, uh, fastest way to do that is I'm going to flip from my data pane to my analytics pane. I'm going to grab average line. And then I don't want to just drop this on one of the axes. I want to drop it on the entire table. Okay. And so what that does is it puts one average for infant mortality rate, one average for health expenditure percentage of GDP per capita. So let me go ahead and I'm going to right click and edit each line. And I'm just going to take the labels off. Um, there's nothing inherently wrong with them. It's just, I feel like they can make the visual feel a little busier. Um, and maybe I could even put that in like the subtitle or something if I want to make it really clear that those are the averages. Okay. Uh, so what we need to do now is we need to write a calculation which would allow us to determine, you know, if the value is above this average and it's above that average, then that's one of these quadrants. And we'll do that four times. Okay. One calculation, four different uh, lines of logic. Okay. So I'll just call this quadrant calc. And here's how we're going to start to set this up. So I will say if the sum of the health expenditure as a percentage of GDP, if that's greater than or equal to the window average of the sum of the health expenditure GDP, and if the sum of the infant mortality rate is greater than or equal to the window average sum of infant mortality rate, okay, then this would be, that would be what, high spending and high infant mortality rate. Okay, it's going to be a, be a pretty long line here. So I could probably hear some of you thinking out loud already, what are we doing? What is window average? What's happening? Okay, so quick description of window average. What it does is these are all aggregated data points, right? So the window average allows us to reference the aggregated data points and to apply an aggregation on top of those. So it's saying, you know, here's all these different sums of uh, infant mortality rate, average those. And if a country's infant mortality rate is above that average, then that criteria is met. Um, we've done a longer video specifically on window functions. So if you need a little bit of a deep dive on those, you can check that out in the description below as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, save ourselves a little time. Let's go ahead and just copy this entire first line paste it down to the second line, and then we'll make some modifications. Okay. So here on the second line, I'll say else if, so let's say the health expenditure per capita, so what, or per percent of GDP, so let's say that's still high, and then if the infant mortality rate is below average, then that would be high spend, but low infant mortality rate. Okay, let's do it all again. Else if, paste this in here. Uh, okay, so let's say else if the health expenditure is less than the average and the infant mortality rate is above the average, then that would be low spend, but high infant mortality rate. 
And then one final one, else if they're both below average, if it's that would be low spend and low infant mortality rate. And then we'll select end. Okay, if you wanna have this whole calculation to just copy, um, you can download the workbook or I'll also put it in the description in our blog post. Um, it doesn't really work on YouTube super well, so I'll put a link to our blog post too. The YouTube doesn't really accept the greater than, less than operators uh, as part of a video description. So it wouldn't really work. Okay, so I'll say okay. And let's go ahead and throw a quadrant calc onto color. And it looks like we did it wrong. We didn't, I'll explain that in a minute. It looks like we did it wrong. Um, but we're actually pretty close here. So let me do one thing really quick. Uh, I'm gonna add region to detail. I'll explain that in a minute or why I would wanna do that. Uh, but what we need to do now is to, within the quadrant calculation, we need to tell Tableau what is the scope that it should be using when it's calculating those window averages, okay? So if I hit the drop down here, uh, well, I guess real quick, so the quadrant calc has this little white triangle at the end of it. That's our visual cue that a table calculation function is being used in that formula. When that's the case, then when we get to a worksheet, we have the ability to edit that table calculation and indicate how we want, in this case, the window average applied. So like I would go to specific dimensions and make sure everything is selected. If I do that, now you can see I've got my nice four quadrants. So what does that mean that I went to specific dimensions and selected those? Sound like a broken record here. We got a blog post of that. You can check that out in the description below if you wanna know more about specific dimensions. The simplest way to think about it is that you are telling Tableau, in this case, if you're calculating an average, what do I want to be included as part of how that average is calculating and when do I want it to restart? So just as a random example, if I deselected region, now each region is gonna have those values that are above and below the average but I don't want it to restart for each region. I just want one average for every country, for, you know, including all the countries in the entire world. So I need to make sure both country and region are selected. And now, you know, we've got close to 200 countries. So now it's calculating an average of all 200 at once. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and uh, apply some colors. Um, I've kind of been vibing with Tableau's, I think these are inherited from Salesforce, but I'm kind of been vibing with their like lightning scheme recently. There's kind of some nice stuff in there. So let's start with kind of the more undesirable situations where there's a high infant mortality rate. So let's say, you know, that's you know, darker orange, burnt orange for countries that are doing high spend, high infant mortality rate, um, maybe a, a lighter orange for low spend and high infant mortality rate. Switch it up to the blues here. Let's say low spend, low infant mortality rate, that's gonna be a kind of a really deep shade of blue. And then high spend, low infant mortality rate is light blue. I don't know, I'd, ha I'd have to think through those colors. Maybe I would wanna flip flop either of the oranges or blues, I'm not sure. Uh, but you can see now it's pretty clear. Okay, the blue line or the blue circles are the ones that are below average for infant mortality rate. The orange circles are the ones that are above average. All right, so we've got a functional, um, uh, a functional quadrant scatter plot. Now I would say it's pretty cool looking, but I don't know if it's entirely functional yet um, because it's you can you know hover over a country one by one or maybe you even add a highlighter. So like this country region that's on detail, if I hit the drop down this pill, I can say show highlighter. And if I wanna find a specific country, like let's say where's the United Kingdom and all this, right? Um, shout out to our friends over there in the UK. You can see that value kind of down below. Um, so that's kind of nice, but uh, it doesn't really allow you kind of at scale to see like where are these countries geographically in the world and like how does some of that work? Okay, so we're gonna deal with that in a minute. Um, you'll notice that when I would select a specific country, it's redrawing the lines, which I don't particularly love. I find that's a little confusing. So let me, if I just right click on the line and deselect the show recalculated line, I'm hopeful, cool. Now it'll just highlight the value without trying to like redraw those averages. So if you have something that's like kind of on the cusp there, like Tanzania, um, then like cool, it doesn't like redraw the line and make it seem like it's moving. Okay, so we're gonna build a couple of other charts to go with this. We'll build uh, a highlight table, we'll build a map. Real quick before we do that, if you check out this info button up here in the top corner, we've got Tableau classes that we run every single month. Uh, we really firmly believe that nobody should have to be on their Tableau journey alone. It's a really fun and powerful tool. Um, it's kind of easy to learn initially to kind of figure out how to do a few things, but it's hard to master because there's a lot of nuance. So we run classes about the basics and advanced concepts in Tableau Desktop 
Um, we run classes for people that want to get more into calculations, Tableau prep. Uh, so we would love you and your colleagues to join us if that sounds like a fit. Um, and uh, yeah, we'd be really happy to, to have, you, have you there. Uh, okay, cool. So let's build a couple other charts that could go with this, and then we're going to combine them in a dashboard. So I'm actually going to duplicate this scatter plot. And I'm going to go to the Show Me tab and have Tableau swap this to a text table. Okay, so it doesn't look like that bad, I guess, initially. Um, but I I like the vibe, the kind of the coloring of a highlight table more than just like a text table where the text is colored and they're a little hard to read anyways. So unfortunately, we can't just switch our mark type to square because we have a discrete field on color, which Tableau doesn't really use. It doesn't really do it nicely. Like what I mean by this is if we had a like a continuous measure on color, it would kind of formatting and visually wise, it would look a lot better. Uh, but when it's a discrete field, it kind of looks clunky. So we're going to use a little workaround, one of my favorites here. We're going to change our mark type to bar. And then we're going to create a calculation that's going to make every bar the same size. So the calculation is one and the formula is just max one. We're going to throw this on size in the marks card now that it's set to bar. I'm going to go to the size uh, slider, crank that all the way to the top. And then if I want to see a little visual separation, I could go into the color tab go to the border drop down, maybe add like a light gray border. Okay. Um, and actually something else I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a copy of my quadrant calc on rows, on the row shelf, um, which could be kind of nice. Let me think about how I wanna do this. I might wanna actually switch region to be after. Um, maybe I don't need region at all. Let me just take, uh, let me just put region on detail for now, see what that looks like. It's kind of cool looking, I don't know. We've got some work to do, but I, I think it's coming together. Um, so now let's build a map. So let's build a map that will kind of use some more things, like use the same color. So I'm going to duplicate this once again. I don't think the Show Me tab is going to allow us to get there. That would have been nice, but probably too easy, I guess. So let's change our mark type to map, which is going to be weird at first. <laughs> kind of cool, though. Get our little, little country shapes. Um, I'm going to put both my measures on detail for now. So there's the healthiest miniature per capita, infant mortality rate. Heck, maybe we even want to put population in there if we want to go really crazy. Okay, and then I'm going to move country from rows to detail. I'm going to take quadrant calc off of my row shelf. And now I need to find my latitude and longitude fields. And hopefully, it all goes to plan here. Just double click on each of those, and Tableau will put them where they need to go. All right, so now I can see these different sections of the world that have high and low infant mortality rates and high and low spend. Um, so now finally, let's kind of put this all together in a dashboard and kind of see how it all works out. So what are we gonna call this dashboard? I'll call this uh, country comparison, health expenditure percentage of GDP versus infant mortality rate. Um, I'm changing my sizing up so it's not running off my screen that will look nicer for this video. Let's show our title. Let's go ahead and center that bad boy. Let's get our scatter plot on here. Let's put, oh, wrong scatter plot. Let's put this scatter plot on here. Let's put the highlight table down below. Let's put the map over there, kind of the side. So we've got some work to do, but um, let me just do rename some of these, save some space. Call this my country list. I'll call this my country map. You can come up with better titles than me. I'm trying to save a little time here and just get to the, the big stuff. Uh, so let me do, let me see if I can remove that legend. Honestly, the color legend might be helpful. So I'm just gonna kind of throw that down here below my title, hit the drop down on the color legend, go to arrange items and say single row. Get these all situated like that. If I wanna do any sort of just visual rearranging, I could like just resorting them if I want it to be in some particular order. It's interesting it brought in a highlighter for all of them. I don't know, I'm gonna try this real quick. Uh, I'm wondering if I could get this to apply to all the worksheets at once. Uh, yeah, it is, it is automatically. That's very, very nice. Okay, let's just kind of throw that up near the top of our, uh, top of our dashboard as well. That way you can just kind of easily highlight a country if you wanna focus on something specifically. All right. We're getting there. And then what I was thinking could be nice, let's go ahead and clear that highlight, is now I think I'll have to kind of tinker with this a little bit, but it could be cool to even set up like a highlight um, across different worksheets. I'm afraid that if I turn this into a filter, that it's gonna change 
yeah, it doesn't really kind of carry over. You'll notice like if I click on Afghanistan or if I click on just like a small spattering of countries here, they're all dark orange up here, but now only one of them is dark orange. So what it's doing is it's recalculating the average based on just my selected values rather than on um, all against all the countries. So like I just click a subset of countries and now this is above the average for that subset of countries and these are below the average. So that could be a cool thing. Um, I don't know, it might also kind of mess with what we're trying to accomplish here. So I guess we'd have to tinker with that a little bit. Uh, but what I think is cool about this is that now if you wanted to kind of hone in on a specific country or if you kind of want to see kind of visually where is some of this occurring, um, now you have the ability to do that by having a few different visuals that incorporate this quadrant. Uh, so there's definitely some kind of cleanup I could do here from a formatting perspective, but I think you get the high level idea. Um, so thank you so much for following along. I hope this was a helpful dive into how to build a quadrant scatter plot and maybe even a few other types of charts to, uh, to pair that with. Um, if you have any questions, um, just let us know. We drop new videos related to Tableau and data visualization every single week here on the channel. So we would love to have you follow along and join us for that as well. So thank you so much. Take care and I'll talk to you next time.